As our story opens today, Prince Namor is showing off for the people. He is the strongest, bravest monarch of all. Truly his strength is beyond anyone's, above or below the surface of the sea. And is matched only by his nobility and character. Speaking of characters, there's one character who's watching from a distant cave and wishes he could change the channel. His name is Xantor, he's an evil scientist, and he's our antagonist for the day. Display your invincible strength while you can, accursed submariner, for the day of reckoning has arrived. For today, the part of Xantor will be played by Santa Claus. He's developed a capsule with a nasty plague in it, especially for Atlantis. And only you, because you are half human, will survive. And that will be my sweetest victory, for you will be a king without a kingdom, the loneliest creature beneath the sea. Actually, the average kingdom would be a lot easier to run if it wasn't for all those people. First, I insert the capsule into my Injecto Gun. Injecto Gun is a registered trademark of Xantor Enterprises Limited and may not be used without permission. And then... Let us see what your strength avails you now, mighty Submariner. It's moving slow enough that he could probably catch it and throw it back, if he was paying attention, which he's not. That cloud over the city, it is most unusual. That's unusual! Stone! He has turned to stone! This is monstrous! Look, another one. Be calm, my lady. I will go for Prince Namor immediately. Before he knows it, Namor is showing off to a crowd of statues. Summon all the physicians and scientific minds in my kingdom. We must find an antidote. He has to have the cheering. Without it, he doesn't feel like a real man. Nobody has any ideas and the plague is spreading. Namor realizes he's going to have to go straight to the top, Neptune. To do that, he has to touch the trident, which is in the temple of Neptune. But sire, the temple is built at the base of Krakatoa Volcano, and only by crossing the burning lava on foot can you reach the trident. Have you forgotten that fire in any form is your one mortal enemy? I think we all forgot because it's never come up before. The biggest danger to him up to this point has been staying out of the water too long. And... Didn't he already do a quest and bring the trident to Atlantis? While Krakatoa Island disappeared in a huge eruption in 1883, the volcano itself continues to be active, mostly underwater. Over the years, islands have appeared and disappeared, and most of the lava is indeed on the sea floor. Namor gives a speech about how a true prince of the blood can do this, and I want to know why he can't just swim over it. Will Prince Namor be able to survive the fiery lava? His one mortal enemy. Uh, look at the screen and I think you have your answer. Our narrator may be watching a different monitor. He reaches the trident, picks it up, and calls Neptune. The stone plague is an ancient malady, unknown for hundreds of generations. Who in your kingdom would recreate such a hideous disease? There is only one mind evil enough to seek such a revenge. Xantor. I shall deal with him later as he deserves, but first I must save my people. Because you put humanity before retribution, I shall tell you, my son. He wasn't sure Namor would do that. Does he pay any attention to his realm at all? The only cure is the X-atom. The X-atom? I thought that was but a legend. It is the basic atom from which all others derive and has the power to cure all illness. So the Higgs boson particle, it had only been postulated two years earlier, which leaves me wondering, did our writer know about it and base this X atom on it? Or is it pure coincidence? Once it was the possession of the Atlanteans, but greed and thirst for power created a civil war. Had they used the atom, all would have been destroyed as punishment I sent it back to its distant realm. Wait, if they used it, they all would have been destroyed? But he said it cures things. What is this, Dingfod? 
It doesn't matter. Namor has to find it. To do that, he has to find a cube that's buried in a glacier at the South Pole. I just report some. I doesn't explain them. It is almost within my grasp. What ice creature is this that bars my way? Deadly ice rays! Dealing with this thing is pretty basic. Break off a good-sized stalactite and use it like a lance. No, he's there for some kind of magic cube, not ice cubes. At last, I hold it in my hands. But nothing happens. The word of Neptune is not to be doubted. He would not deceive me. Perhaps if I rub it, the friction may bring it to life. There, it's beginning to glow and pulsate. The genie should appear any second now. What sorcery is this? I have been transported to a sub-microscopic world. You're looking for one atom. What did you think had to happen to find it? The problem is some amoebas and other critters think he looks good to eat. Suddenly a bunch of molecules come along, just free-floating single molecules of various sizes and colors. That's what we're told. They're about to squash Namor. At least that might be quicker than getting eaten by an amoeba. Must hold them back. Then, without warning, and plunging into a world of atoms, Namor is swept toward his fate. Don't look at me. I can spell subatomic physicist, and I can almost say it. I'm definitely not one. That whatever it is carries him straight to the X atom. Almost. You are at the gateway to the realm of the X atom, and I am the guardian. It is the command of eternity that I destroy all intruders. But I come in peace. I don't think he cares. And he's got atomic rays shooting from his eyes to prove it. Will do you no good to evade me, for none can withstand my atomic rays. And I shall turn your own strength against you. Isn't it convenient that he was wearing a mirror as a pendant? No matter, Namor has reached the X atom. Who are you? It really does cure everything. It even grows hair. And that's who are you? Whom is accusative case? You want nominative... Never mind, he'll explain later. I am Prince Namor the First of Atlantis, Lord of the Seven Seas, and Stop. I... Stop! Your communication is too slow for me. That's his polite way of saying you talk too much. It reads his mind, gets the story and how noble and worthy Namor is, and says, okay, let's go. I hope Namor has a really tiny pocket in his trunks. Destiny has returned me. I must reach Atlantis with all speed. Never mind, the atom grew with him. That guy said he'd send him back, but of course he couldn't send him clear back to Atlantis. He has to drop him a ways away, so it's still a race against time. Don't help him too much, dude. Xantor has been watching, and he spotted Namor with the atom. Ah, I shall destroy him. And the X atom will be mine. With it in my possession, I can rule the seas, and perhaps the surface world as well. You are doomed, Prince Namor. Your kingdom is gone. I sent the plague to Atlantis, and you will never reach there alive. They can't help it. These guys have to talk. Somebody with a little bit tougher ego would keep their yap shut and sneak up on him. When you have to go around telling everybody you're superior, you're not so sure of it yourself. Stand tall! But I cannot take time now, for time is running out! I must channel my fellow undersea ruler, Aquaman. Hear me, giant squid! I call upon you to hold yonder villain at bay until I can restore my people. Obeying the master of the seven seas, the giant squid attacks Santor's ship. In the comics, I don't remember Namor ever having control over critters the way Aquaman did, and it's been inconsistent in the cartoons. One time he can, next time it never comes up, even though it would be useful. Today he has it, and like a good short-sighted villain, Xantor forgot to build any kind of protection against such things into his vehicle. 
So while Namor uses the atom to restore the people to life, Xantor can sit there and mutter things we wouldn't put in the comics, much less the cartoons. Be gone, faithful squid. Disintegrator gun. I must destroy it. No! The mighty submariner runs for his life. Ha ha! The brave prince, fleeing like the coward he is. Okay. Yeah, while you were talking as usual, he was circling around behind you. No! No, I don't thank you! Too late, Xantor! You must fight without weapons now! Namor is mistaken. Xantor does have one more weapon. Mercy! Mercy, my prince! Begging. Namor won't kill him, but he does know what to do with him. This time I banish you to the forbidden deeps from which no man returns. No! No! He didn't do that the first time because everything is restored and Namor is a hero yet again. And this was one of the most boring episodes yet. Close to half of it is nothing but talking and most of the talk goes nowhere. A lot of it is either Namor or Xantor talking about how great they are and how much better they are than the other guy. Except for the ice monster, everything Namor encountered had to give a speech like that atomic guy, and I only showed part of his. If the story isn't enough to fill the runtime, get a different one. There were enough to choose from, and even though I bought and read all the comics, I don't remember this one even a little bit. More than that, I used to come home from school every day and watch these on TV. I don't remember them ever showing this one, and I think I can see why. Either they didn't air it, or it was so dull, nothing about it stayed with me. There were a couple of the Submariner stories that I suspected were made out of whole cloth, including the next one coming up. I'm suspecting the same thing about this one. I know it's a little late, but I have a message for the guys who did that. Don't. You suck at it. Longer than a whale, he can swim anywhere. He can breathe underwater and go flying through the air. The noble submariner rips up the deep to be where he's in the sea. The neighbor of Atlantis is the prince of the deep. Going off to a... He used it in the... Off a good size... Good size, yes. Half of it is most... Cubes. Cubes, cube, good grief.